Hello and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. My name is Steven and today we are on lesson number three of our application design series. Today is going to be the fun lesson that you've been waiting for where we actually start using some color and designing the application. <clears throat> so in the previous lessons we set up this template and then made our wireframe. Now today we're going to be starting on the bottom over this little menu tab area. I'm thinking we might create the icons in a separate lesson rather rather than doing the menu bar or the background and then doing the icons individually. Um, that way we can just focus on designing it and not have to stop and do the icons. Uh, we can just do a series where maybe it'll be a time lapse where I'll do all the icons and all that. So we'll, we'll see what happens, how quickly I get this done. Let's get started. I'm going to try and create everything in vector. That way it's scalable. And if I have to make it a larger size or smaller, I don't have to worry about getting pixelated. So I just turn on my guys by doing command and the apostrophe or colon sign on your keyboard. And I'm going to draw out a rectangle. Uh, just starting from the top left corner, click and drag it. And it's going to snap into place because we have those guides there, which is excellent. And then I'm just going to make it a quick gray color. All right. And now one thing I want to do is add a pattern to it just so it looks a little more 3D and like it's doing something. So um, let's quickly add a quick gradient overlay and let's try putting that on multiply and see what happens. Bring that down. All right, so we have a gradient here, but I want to add a pattern. And the patterns that I have by default are not very nice. So I'm going to create my own. So all I'm going to do is click Control N and create a new document. And the size is going to be 6 by 6 and kind of tiny don't be scared we're just going to scale it up and then zoom way in whoa 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 it's like a black hole over there so then I'm going to grab my pencil tool uh, by clicking on the paintbrush click and hold click on the pencil and then let's double click on this background and then create a new layer and then we can delete the background alright so on this new layer you can see that we have these pixels here and actually the size is incorrect I'm going to do image image size and I want to do 3 by 3 alright much smaller so we can zoom in alright we're in all the way and I'm gonna click one right here oops make sure I have my foreground is black so you can click D and then X to flip it and black is my foreground I'm gonna draw one right here one right here kind of a strange pattern but um, now that we have that we can go to edit and then we are going to click on define pattern click that let's name it uh, weirdness that's cool click OK and then you can go ahead and close out of this so now over here in our rectangle layer let's double the double click and name this menu background I'll double click it and go to pattern overlay and I'm going to click on these patterns and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on our new pattern and then I'm going to change this to, let's try multiply and then lower down that opacity something like that and actually this color is bothering me, I don't, I don't like it very much so I'm going to click OK and double click on here and let's try maybe adding just slight brown to it just very very slight and maybe, I don't know, something like this and then that gradient is way too harsh. I'm bring up the scale to 150%, and then bring down the opacity. Let's see before, after, and the pattern looks to be a little bit too heavy. Something like that. Kind of strange, but maybe maybe it'll work out. We'll see. Might have to change it. Um, so now let's add some spacers in here. Spacers to signify uh, where all the icons go. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to go to this blank layer here, and with the pencil, or actually let's not use a pencil because we want to stay vector, uh, I'm going to click on this line tool, hold on shift and drag down, and the line is going to be black. Alright, so I'm going to hold down alt and, uh, alt and then click the arrow to the right, and that's going to create a duplicate of it. Double click, and I'm going to make it white. And let's select both of these, click control T, and scale them down. just like that and then just the bottom edge right over here we're going to click on this and drag that up perfect alright so now let me 
bring up this opacity again. And I'm really not sure if I like this background, but uh, let me double click here. Let's modify the pattern. Let's bring that down just so it's very subtle. All right. And then for these colors, uh, I'm going to bring down the opacity on the white. I'm going to click Control H to hide that uh, the line that goes around vector objects, and it gets really obnoxious in the way. So I'm just going to bring down that opacity there. I'm going to bring it down on the black as well. And let's see. I just want a slight highlight, so maybe 20, 25%. And this one maybe, let's see. We'll go with 20. So we got 20 for the black, 20 for the white, or 25 for the white. So black, and then white. And then I'm going to select both of these, and then right click and do con convert to smart object. And we'll double click on this and name it spacer. And that way, all of our spacers are in the smart object. So if we double click here, uh, when we edit this in here, it will change all the times that we use the spacer, all the instances of it. So that saves us some time. Okay, so let's see. Let me uh, lower our opacity on this menu background and then bring out this spacer. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift and going to drag it out. Uh, and then Alt and Shift, you're going to drag it out again. And then do it one more time. Cool. So we group all these together and we'll name it Tab Spaces. Bring back up this opacity. And there we go. Let me zoom out. Oh, that's actually 100%. So let me zoom out a little bit more. Ah, it gets too blurry. You know what? It's all right. I'm not I'm not the happiest with this background, but maybe we can modify it later. <clears throat> One thing that's sticking out to me is the white on these strokes. So let me show you what these smart objects do. I'm going to double click on the little icon for spacer. And then go for the white section. And lower that down to maybe 20%. Save it. And it changes all of it. I'm going to do the same thing for the black. I'm going to go down to 15. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have that, I just want to do a quick sample of what uh, the icon would look like. So I'm just going to draw just something simple because we're going to be creating icons later. So let me just draw out... Um, let's do a heart because we all love Pixel for Life. So I'll zoom in. I'm going to hold down Shift and just draw out a heart right here. Double click it, gonna make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add uh, Control H to get rid of that the stroke around it. Gonna double click and add a drop shadow, a distance of zero, and then lower down that opacity. And I like to do normal blending mode for shadows. And then let's try uh, let's let's try using a stroke, one pixel inside, and just gonna use the same gray. But then I'm going to do an inner shadow. Um, just so you can see, I might have moved too fast, sorry. Uh, I just did a stroke inside for the position, one pixel. And the color was just the same gray as the background. Click OK. Go to inner shadow, normal again for the blend mode. Let's bring up the opacity, make the color white. And then, it's kind of cool, but no. Um, change the distance to zero, choke all the way up. Size, let's try one. Well, let's try two. And then we will lower the opacity way down like this. And let's see. And then let's zoom out to 100% and see what that looks like. That's not bad. Let me zoom in. And then one technique that I want to try doing is um, I'm going to duplicate this. Control, sh Control T. Hold down Alt and Shift. I'm going to drag it down. Just have a small heart in the center. And then, because I want to kind of have like a 3D effect, so all the icons or icons that I use are going to have some sort of 3D effect like that. Change the settings on it. Let's uh, double click here. I'm going to take off the stroke, the inner shadow. Let's just take that off for now and just stick with the drop shadow. Um, I'm going to keep this. Uh, actually, going to make it white, like that. Bring up the opacity just a little bit. Bring up the spread so it makes a very hard line. Distance of one, size of zero. And then for global light, we're going to change that to 90, like that. And then for inner shadow, we're going to change it to normal, make it black, uh, distance of 1, size all the way down, something like that. And then we'll lower this opacity. 
and maybe we'll make it one size bigger bring down the choke just a little bit just so it's a little bit softer of an edge uh, let's try the same thing for the for the drop shadow gonna bring up the the size to one and lower that stroke just so it's just so it's a little bit softer you can see right there looks kinda nice so let's zoom out and see that very cool I like the little detail that it adds so let's let's just group this together convert to smart object and we'll name this sample icon now we can kinda steal those layers when uh, those layer styles whenever we're ready to make the rest of the icons okay so let's let's start creating the hover effect so let's zoom in and then what I'm gonna do is create a new layer and then I'm gonna draw it a rectangle around a rectangle keeping it a vector and I'm gonna draw it from this white line here to the black line here or actually to the next white well to the next white line something like that and then we're gonna change the color to a dark gray that should probably maybe we'll do a blue or actually orange maybe we'll do it with orange see what that looks like and then click OK then we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna draw a rounded rectangle hold oops we wanna draw a ellipse so just something like this or actually we'll take from the top here go down to the bottom here and then we're gonna make it black and then we're gonna go to filter blur or actually convert for smart filter up here then filter blur Gaussian blur something like that and then we're gonna right click and go to create clipping mask so then it clips it just to this one shape right here and we'll name this hover background then we'll name this one shadow and then we can lower this opacity here like this and then we're gonna duplicate it actually so hold down alt and shift I'm gonna drag it over and we'll duplicate it like that zoom out and see what that's looking like not the best but it'll get better and then I want to add kinda of like a glare going off the edges over here so I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna create a new layer and then add a line tool and make sure my color is white hold it down shift gonna drag gonna drag from the top to the bottom alright and then I'm gonna double click it and change um, we're gonna remove the fill go to gradient overlay change this to reflected click on this right here and go from white to transparent click OK and then click OK let's zoom out and see what that looks like um, let's get off of these shapes I hate how it makes that selection around it and I'm just gonna lower the opacity just so it's not so bright like that and then I'm gonna duplicate it over actually to the next side and I'm gonna name this edge highlight and it's good to keep your layers name so it's a little bit easier to see uh, when you gotta go back and select something a little bit easier plus with the new CS6 you can search uh, by name and if you want it highlight oops spelled correctly and it'll show all the highlights so it's, it's pretty good to uh, to name all your layers just to make your life a little bit easier okay so now we have that and it's a slight, I don't know, it's not the nicest. Let's, let's see if we can make it a little bit better. Let's create a new layer. And maybe double click here. Let's see what adding a gradient overlay. Let's try radial. And we'll name to make it from white to transparent. Bring up the scale. And see if we can drag this down like this maybe. And then change this to overlay. Maybe that'll give it just a little bit of character or something. And then let's do a pattern overlay. Maybe that's what we're missing. Let's select that same pattern that we have there. And we're going to bring that opacity way, way down. Um, let's change it to multiply. And bring it way down. Just something subtle, like 2% like that. Zoom out. And that's looking better, much better. Um, one thing I want to do is add a slight highlight to the top here. Kind of like we have all on the, all of the edges of the button. I'm going to have it all the way on the top as well. So above the menu background, or actually above everything, um, let's first group this together. Change this to hover. Alright. 
So above everything, I'm gonna create a new line. I'm gonna draw, drag from the left to the right. I'm gonna keep it white, and then I'm gonna bring it up. Control H again to hide that stupid line. I'm gonna zoom in, and then let's lower down that opacity quite a bit. Like that, and that adds some nice depth to it. So let's change it to a nice even number, like 45. And that's looking good. And then let's add one to the bottom. Let's see what that looks like. Um, maybe we'll make it black. Okay. And then one thing we have to do is uh, create the hover. Let's see what the hover looks for the icon. So I'm going to drag this up, this heart icon right here. And I'm going to drag it over to the right. Oops. Holding down shift, you're just going to drag it over to the center. As you can see, that doesn't look very nice. Uh, it kind of looks like it's floating too much above it. And I kind of want to make it look like it's inset, I guess. So let's double click on the heart. And we're just going to drag all these layers out. And then just close this up. Um, because if we edited that, then it would edit this one too. We want to make this one a separate instance. So I'm just going to select these two layers and just drag it over to where it was at before. And then just delete this one icon on the bottom. Okay. So now is the fun part of recreating this. So let's double click here. And let's go for drop shadow. A distance of maybe two. And we're going to make the color white. Bring up the spread like this. And then for inner shadow, we're going to make the color black. And we're going to take off stroke because we don't need that anymore. And then a distance of maybe one. Bring down that spread and then lower the opacity. And then maybe we'll put the stroke back on. Let's see what stroke looks like. But then we'll change this to overlay. And then lower the opacity down. Just so it has some kind of edge right there. Let's zoom out. And see what that's looking like. So far so good. I'm liking it. Let's double click and maybe change the color a little bit. Um, you know what? I'm just going to keep it gray for now. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with the button yet. So I'm just going to keep the color gray. Maybe we'll see. Um, ah, it's bothering me though. Maybe we'll make it. Ah, I just don't know yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, now I'm angry. I don't know. Let's uh, let's just delete this icon for now. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Or right, we'll just leave it. Um, I'm gonna group it together and go test hover icon. All right. And then um, you know what? I think that's gonna finish it off here. Kind of confused about what to go with next. Um, we're probably gonna start working on the center area right here. And then we'll move on up to the title bar. And then we'll come back and we'll create all the icons for this part, uh, for the title bar here. And we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I uh, hope you didn't get too frustrated with my confusion. And see you next time.